fine. Joining me now to discuss this historic moment is physicist Michio Kaku. Michio, this is not just a landing, but an upright landing. How does this compare to what we've seen recently, including Japan's mission, uh, where the spacecraft landed, but kind of not, on, <laughs> not, not upright, maybe on its side or upside down? Well, you can imagine the champagne bottles are being uncorked across the United States celebrating this event. This is the first time ever that a commercial company put something on the moon. And as you pointed out, the Japanese also put something on the moon uh, about a week or so ago, but it landed upside down. This probe landed correctly, but it also landed in the right region of the moon, the solar, the, the polar ice caps in the South Pole where there could be ice, ice that could be used for rocket fuel, ice that could be used for breathing. That's why they landed on the South Pole. Very important. Yeah, that's incredibly significant to all of this. Look, I'm going to ask you a pretty basic question here, but it's one I think a lot of people have. You know, 50 years ago, we put a man on the moon. Why has it been so challenging to do it again and do it repeatedly uh, not just by the United States, but by other countries that have, have been uh, attempting these landings? Well, the key word is cost, C-O-S-T. It costs $10,000 to put a pound of anything just in orbit around the Earth. It takes 10 times that to put a pound of anything on the moon. And now prices are beginning to drop. Because of Elon Musk and others, rockets, booster rockets are now reusable. Think about that. Think of driving a car and junking a car after one ride in a car. Cars would be very expensive. That's why rockets are expensive. But now rockets are reusable, and that has dropped the cost. And that means that even smaller nations can begin to field space probes into outer space. Today, we have the United States, Russia, China, India, Japan fielding soft landings on the moon. Pretty soon, other countries will all join in because the costs are dropping. That's the key. Yeah, that's incredibly significant. There have been 21 successful moon landings just in, uh, in the, the past. Most of them were near that lunar equator. Now that uh, this Odysseus is at the South Pole, um, what comes next after that in terms of actually exploiting what is there? Well, we want to begin the process of harvesting the cometary ice, uh, cometary because the comets will impact on the South Polar region and won't disperse because there's shadows, shadows that prevent it from evaporating. And we want to find out how much, how much cometary ice there is. Ice that can be broken up into hydrogen and oxygen to create rocket fuel, oxygen that you can use for breathing. Oxygen and water, of course, that you can use for drinking purposes. We want to find out exactly how much there is so that the moon could become a refueling station for Martian missions to the red planet. So in the future, astronauts may first go to the moon, load up with fuel, hydrogen, oxygen, and then blast off to go to Mars. So the moon could be a very crucial piece in this whole puzzle yeah. of how to reach the how to reach the red planet. Well, that is pretty cool to think about. Uh, there's so much that's ahead uh, for space travel and space exploration. Professor Michio Kaku, thank you so much for explaining all that to us. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime.